Whoa, why 800? What happened to ISO? 400. 100 is my default ISO on this camera on the Z6 or the Z6 Mark II. I'll go to 200 and I go from 200 straight to 800. Hello everyone and welcome to my Nikon Z6 Mark II best ISO settings video. Now, before you switch off, there's something in this you need to know. So, um, let's get into it and I'll tell you all about it. So yes, all along you would have been told, shoot at ISO 100 to give you the cleanest possible results. And that is still completely correct, do not get me wrong. But if you were boosting your ISO and going ISO from 100 to 200, 400, 800, 1600, 3200, you would think that the noise would start to amplify in a linear fashion. So in other words, the noise is going to start to improve on a steady curve. Well, that's where you're wrong. And the simple reason being is that most of these modern digital cameras now have what's called dual native ISO. So somewhere along that graph where the, li the line of your ISO noise is improving, or let's say, sorry, is increasing, not improving. So the noise is actually increasing. There's a bump and it goes back down and then it goes back up long again. So the important thing to know is what is the second native ISO point in your camera. And yes, the Z6 and Z6 Mark II have the same native ISO point. And that native ISO point is ISO 800. So if you've ever been out shooting and you're kind of going, oh, I'm shooting this ISO 400, should I go to 800? The simple answer is yes, yes, you should. Yes, you should. Because you will see no difference between 400 and 800, which makes no sense. Because ISO 400, if you're shooting at ISO 400 and you say, oh look, I don't want to increase too much noise, I'll go up to ISO 500 or ISO 640 instead. You're actually going to get worse results than you will at ISO 800. Which is, is kind of mind-blowing to a certain extent, but that's, that's kind of fact. Even ISO 1200 will give you similar results to ISO 640, or even ISO 500, which is just nuts. So if you're ever in that situation, always go 800. It's actually my default setting on this camera. I'll go ISO 100, I'll go ISO 200, and then I'll go straight to 800. Because there's no point messing around with 400, I'll go straight to 800. It's gonna give you a faster shutter speed. It's gonna, it's gonna capture more light in, in theory. So the next big question you have is, right, how do you know this, Kieran? Well, I know this from years of experience and trying this camera a lot and using it an awful lot, and it's something I've always kind of known, but. I never knew the exact changeover point. I always thought it was about ISO 640, but I, I believe it's actually ISO 800. And um, in researching this recently, because I had a client ask me, oh, well, do you know, what do you normally shoot at? And I said, ISO 800. If I'm going, I go 100, 200, and then 800. And they say, whoa, why 800? What happened to ISO 400? And what I just tell him is, there's very little difference. So <laughs> we got into this big long trade on, of emails. And I was thinking, yeah, there's probably a lot of other people out here who don't know this and who could really benefit benefit by this. So it's why I'm producing this video right now. I actually found a website where they've all this plotted out. And they haven't just got it for the Z6 or the Z6 Mark II, they have it for the Z7, the D850, the D810. They have it for nearly all the cameras out there. So I'm going to leave a link to that in the description down below. And um, do check that out. That is an incredibly handy website to have. Anyway, uh, uh, enough about this. Let's, let's take a few photographs with the camera and see those theory actually turn into best practice. And um, for me, yes, it does. So, uh, and the one thing I should say is 400 and 800, there is a fractional difference. There is, you're not, go it's not going to be exactly the same. But what I found is there is very little difference in the two. So it is well worthwhile jumping straight to 800. So what I'm doing here now is I'm shooting tethered in Lightroom. So as you can see, it's 1 20th of a second, F11, ISO 100. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press the shutter button and our photograph should import here now. So here's our first photograph. Now as you can quite clearly see, this shot is completely underexposed. I purposely underexposed this shot by two stops. Now why did I do that? I did that so we can amplify the noise even more now again. So this is shot at ISO 100. We're going to go into our develop module here now and we're going to increase our exposure by plus two. So that should bring it to be roughly around right. That's not too mightily far off there now. Now what we can do is just increase our shadows a small bit again. That's why I put the black item in there. There we go, you can see this few dust bits and whatnot around the place, but 
Otherwise, that looks really kind of clean enough. Now, even at ISO 100, you can see there is a bit of noise coming through because we're plus two in exposure and we're going to plus 81 there now in our shadows. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take another photograph here now and what we're going to do is bring our ISO up to ISO 200 and then our shutter speed up to 140 of a second and take the shot that's going to import in along there now and there you can see there is the shot and that is shot at ISO 200. If I zoom in, you can see there's a bit more noise there now again. Straight away, a bit more noise running down along. Bit more noise here too as well. So again, I'm gonna to go to ISO 400 here now, and we're gonna bring our shutter speed up to 180. Fire off our shot there now again. And here we have ISO 400. And if I zoom in along, you can see there's a good bit more noise just starting to creep through along here now and quite a bit more noise coming through along here. Now this is where it gets interesting now. What we're gonna do is gonna to go to ISO 800. And theoretically there should be no real difference between the two of these. And as you can see, I'm changing my ISO and I'm changing my shutter speed so we get exactly the same results. So if I press the shutter, shutter button here now, we're gonna see how much of a difference there is. So that's ISO 800. I'm gonna go back to the previous shot there now. So this is the previous shot. I'm gonna bring it to the same spot. So this is now ISO 400, and this is ISO 800. And you can see there is a fractional difference in the two of them, but there isn't a lot. ISO 800 is a small bit more noisy. It is a small bit more noisy. There's no doubting that, but there is very little difference in the two of them. So let's go to the lens here now, the writing the lens and whatnot, and go to the next one. So this is now in ISO 800, and this is ISO 400. You can see there's practically no difference in the two of those. Now, if I go to ISO 1600, and then I increase my shutter speed there now again, and fire off my shot, that is, <laughs> yeah, that is ISO 3200, so you can see there is a massive difference there now. That is really, Oh, so it has ISO 1600, and you can see there's a good difference there now. So that's ISO 1600, and if we bring this back along here now, and we go ISO 800, and if we go ISO 400, we're just going to swap between the three doors. So that's ISO 400, that is ISO 800, and that is ISO 1600. You can even see in the white in the background here now, there is noise everywhere. Whereas on the ISO 800, it's not that bad. Now you have to remember, we're zoomed in at 200% here now. So this is a 200% magnification. We're at plus two in our exposure and plus 81 in our shadows. So if I go back to 100%, that looks good enough. And this is on ISO 800. ISO 1600, you can see that's very noisy there now. So I hope this video was educational and helpful for you. If it was, please like, comment, subscribe, and see you out there, everyone.